Talking Yank and Talking Baseball podcast host and the, uh, I guess, CEO of uh, John Boy Media. John Boy back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. You got it. All right. So uh, I know you talked to Aaron Boone. Um, uh, have you already spoken to him post deadline and that's coming out later? Is that what's going on? Yeah, that one just came out. So we talked to him like an hour or so ago. Yeah. Okay. So what are you willing to share that, you know, again, everyone should obviously go seek it out on your platforms. But what can you share with me of what he told you after the Yankee trade deadline? netted a reliever from the White Sox and then one from the Rangers who they then sent to the minors. Give me that one. It, it, it's a tough line of questioning because ultimately it's the front office that makes the decision. I, I tried to ask, like, does he have clarity on their plan? Because the press conference, the, the, the scrum he had right before the trade deadline, they asked him what he's expecting. He said, well, we could trade guys, we could gain guys, or we could do nothing. It was like, oh, so does anyone know the plan? He, he said, from his point of view, that they're in a really tough spot being being two out of the wild card, and they they don't want to strip it because they don't want to kill the chances of going to the playoffs. And then uh, and then people want their rentals. Well, they're they want to pay too much of a price, but it doesn't really make any sense. They they just dropped to either 23rd or 28th in in prospect rankings because all these other teams just bolstered their their farm, which now they have that ammo to use in future trades or develop and and graduate to MLB players. And the Yankees didn't do that, nor did they make the team better. It's it's kind of unbelievable to not do either of those at the deadline. Right. That's what I was talking about. At least the Mets chose a lane, you know, Uh, at least, you know, they chose a lane and um, it's kind of gutsy to do um, when, when, when you're, you're in the same market, obviously in New York, but um what what uh, what do you think is the plan with Brian Cashman? Just like, hey, I thought this was it, and it's not, and I'm just going to stay the course because I still believe it's it, and the team that he rewarded with that belief then returned in kind with three hits in eight innings against the race? Is that literally what happened I, last night? That's my fear. My fear is we talked about that a little bit with, uh, you know, on Boone saying he, he, these are, this is the team, these are the guys, and they're just underperforming. But – I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if they're underperforming. They might just be performing to their abilities at this point in their careers or at this point in the state of the game. It just feels like you need to about face and make some changes, and you definitely need some lefties at the top of the lineup and the ability to not rely solely on Aaron Judge. So that's that's why I, I applaud the Mets and Cohen for doing what they're doing. They saw an opportunity to bolster their minor league system like crazy, and then uh, they don't care about money. They basically just spent money on prospects, which then can lead to more trades or they can graduate them. So, yeah, I'm a little jealous of the Mets. I also I, I don't want to be strung along the remainder of the season, but I will because I'm a fan. Yes. And all fans are a little dumb. So if they win two games, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll scoot forward in my seat and I'll get really upset with myself that I'm doing that because – this team's not that good. Well, I mean, what they need to, to get is is a pitching performance that's half of Garrett Cole. <laughs> you know, like that's that's what they need to get, um, and then get some timely hitting from guys who just don't make contact. Um, that's and that's why I thought, you know, maybe Cashman should consider selling off Lemayhu and should consider. And I don't know if Rizzo was even sellable off. Uh, I, I those are the guys that I would consider Torres just go ahead and, and burn it down. Um, and the fact that he didn't do that leads me to believe to, is his job Cashman. I know, you know, Jimmy Trainer thinks he he's like a Supreme court justice sitting there. Is his job in jeopardy? Do you think with the Yankees? I don't, I don't know. Has anyone uh, that was there in one of those higher positions, president or GM or anything been let go by how I think they were all hired by George, so I just I feel like that's the, that's the group. Mm. I don't know. They they've never made big changes at the top of the organization in, in any facet. I don't think so. I think it's uh, I think I think they're pretty secure there. I don't know. I, that it's very interesting. It's a, a completely different dynamic from obviously how Steinbrenner ran the team. Uh, of course. <laughs> I remember those days, John Boy, uh, a night like yeah. Sunday night in Baltimore where a pitcher didn't give up. Like, Luis Severino would have been on the Mariners by the end of the night, you know, or or in Columbus, Ohio, for the Columbus Clippers by the end of the night. 
And, um, you know, Boone would have been fired a long time ago. Uh, I mean, if George well, that's, wasn't I, I get in really frustrated. And, and non-Yankee fans, they will point to me and say, I'm just being a spoiled Yankee fan. And I'll say, of course I am. That's the brand that I, I, I signed up for. That, that's what Steinbrenner created, this brand of, like, one of their bigger selling points was, you know, the most demanding fans in sports. Uh, if you can't make it there, you can't make it. You can make it there, you can make it anywhere. That was, like, that's part of the Yankee brand, the Yankee way. And then – this season, when they're in last place, Hal comes out and says he's confused why the fans are upset. What are you talking? That's the whole brand. That's what your dad built. Oh, I'm 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 with you. We're 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 talking the same yeah. language. I've got uh, John Boy. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just I get fired up about it. I can. No, I, you got to win. I can. I can tell. I you know I'm 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 right there with you. Uh, John Boy of John Boy Media here on the Rich Eisen Show. So, do you think the Mets are really out on Otani with what? Scherzer said Billy Epler told him that caused Scherzer to say, well, then definitely get me out of here. I'll waive my no trade clause for certain places. And they've sent him to Texas and he's like, sold, I'll go. Like, do you really think that the Mets are not going to be in on Otani later on this year? Oh, I didn't put that together, but no, I don't believe that. Everyone's going to be in on Otani, right? Uh, I would think. I mean, that is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could be in on Otani, but that's the. <laughs> The only that's thing the you exception. Do next year, and then you do all the other moves in 2025. I don't know, but yeah, I didn't. And I wonder if Scherzer, if that conversation is is how Scherzer reported it. That's a great follow up he should have had. Well, I'm not going to go get a tiny because <laughs> I'd like to be teammates with him. Uh, that's that's the whole. That's the that was the, the thing that jumped out at me, uh, John Boy. I'm like, okay, so you're out of big time any any big time free agent this coming year. It's just maybe the biggest free agent, you know. Uh, ever maybe since like Reggie Jackson before you were born and when I was a little kid you know I mean like that's that's how huge we're talking about Uh, I I wouldn't believe that you know it's going to be a wild courting of him because what we don't really know what he wants everyone thought he was going to go to the Yankees and there's big names and he went to the Angels he came to the U.S. to play baseball for less money He, he avoided the posting fee and all of that and signed the you know the minor league deal or whatever that uh, it was. So what does he want? Does now he value the money? Is he going to be tempted to set the market and mm-hmm. go as high as he can, like all top free agents are, or is he just going to want to stay cozy with the angels? Like I, I can't, I can't believe I'm even saying that's an option, but I have no idea. It's entirely possible. John boy of John boy media here on the rich Eisen show. So which teams do you think uh, are, are now the favorites are we seeing in Atlanta, Houston World Series? Is that what we're seeing right now? Texas might sneak in. Somebody else in the, the Dodgers might break through again. What do you got for me right now? I like. I, I think I like the front runners. I like Atlanta, and I do like Houston. I think bringing Verlander back, even though they were pretty pretty good at the starting pitching, uh, you know, department anyway. But mm-hmm. I think you can't count the Astros out. But I do like what the Rangers did. I do think the Rangers set themselves up. They they make it into the wild card or they get into the postseason, even if they win the division. I think they set themselves up to have a, a playoff roster where, where some teams made some trades here to get into the playoffs, but they're not bolstering the roster enough to be a playoff contender, which I think the extra wild card teams has has done, which some people enjoy, some people I don't enjoy. I'm just like, well, what are what are the Cubs gonna do with Candelario? It doesn't help them right. win the NLCS. Right. Uh, I'm with you. Um, b- before I let you go, John Boy, uh, what what's your favorite uh, lip reading that you've been able to pull off this year so far? What's your Ooh, favorite this one? This year, I think it was, it's got to be Scherzer when he got uh, ejected for <laughs> the sticky stuff, and he just said, just kept saying it's rosin and sweat, it's rosin and sweat. Mm-hmm. And one of the broadcasts stayed on him for a while, and I my I edited it so it was like a really slow cinematic zoom from wide all the way close to his face, just over and over, it's rosin and sweat, it's rosin and sweat. Right. And now, I guess he'll have that uh, in Texas. He's uh, yeah, he certainly he's hotter more, there, so. More sweat. It'd be even more sweaty. More sweat, yeah. rosin, sweat, and tears. Uh, all right, man, what do, you, what do you think happens with the Yanks? They totally missed the playoffs, right? Like, I, I don't, I, I just don't see a team, you, you look in the dugout, they look demoralized. They look thoroughly demoralized. Look, the they, Orioles they, beat them up, and now here come the, the Rays have already taken this series. Like, this thing seems to be a wrap, John Boy. I got to agree. I, I think that the four games against Houston, seeing Verlander again, it might get 
very, very ugly. And yeah, I have. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. John Boyd, thanks again. Uh, when yeah. so uh, your your conversation with Aaron Boone is uh, already posted, correct? Yep, you can find it Talking Yanks on any podcast app or uh, on the YouTube channel. John Boyd, thanks for the time, brother. You be well. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 